Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All who have Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. That was improvising. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to say that first, but then I'm going to temper it with an announcement. Um, on Friday evening, Laverne we Ida died. Um, her pastor, um, her, his son, it was peaceful and in his, you know, he was sleeping. So um, let's keep. Joanne and his sons and grandchildren and everybody in your prayers. Um, they were making arrangements yesterday, but I don't know what those are, so I'm sure Pastor will let everyone know what the arrangements are. Um, our gathering hymn this morning is number 377, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call, oh, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our Kyrie can be found on page 203. Revive our faith in your mercy, and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Acts, the fifth chapter. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to now read responsibly today's Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live, live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has the Son. It is marvelous in our house. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us. We pray to you, Lord, for us to serve our enemies. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us life. Form a procession of branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord. The Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Our second reading is from Revelation, the first chapter. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Easter greeting, called out now beginning a week ago with loud voices, maybe with brass instruments, with choirs, and alleluia choruses returning to worship. The Easter promise symbolized by Easter flowers, by lilies and azaleas and tulips, maybe. Alleluia banners unfurled in our spaces, brightly colored eggs collected in baskets, piping hot, hot cross buns, and feasting. Feasting to celebrate Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Whatever, whatever Easter Sunday look like for your congregation or for you or for your family or loved ones, the festival of the resurrection is one particular moment to sing our alleluias with gusto. For we, for we who have heard the story of Jesus, who have been claimed by the Spirit in baptism, who are marked with the cross of Christ, who have been transformed from death to life, know the power of God in Christ Jesus. We know the power of God to make a way where there is no way. We know the promise of God, which is to love us to life. From the first day of creation, to on the day the tomb was empty, to the day when Christ is promised to come again, to usher in the promised new creation, where all will know God's abundant love, and where all will be new. We are witnesses to these things. Today's gospel finds the disciples in a different kind of moment. It's Easter day, yet they have not yet been witnesses to this promise of life. Instead, on this day in our gospel text, the disciples are in a locked house, cowering in fear, as they do not know what is going to happen next. They are known disciples of Jesus. They have been seen as his disciples, carriers of his message from town to town, his message conveyed of love 
and forgiveness, of healing, of promise, of wholeness. They were aligned with Jesus, their beloved teacher, who has now died. He's been put to death because his message of love, mercy, forgiveness, peace, justice, welcome was too much for those in power. Jesus' proclamation of God's truth for the life of the world managed to get him betrayed, arrested, tried, beaten, mocked, and crucified. And he's died and has been buried. His disciples are devastated. They are gathered in grief at the death of their beloved Jesus. They are gathered in horror at the possibility of their own potential arrests or worse. They are gathered as a group that has had their hope crushed as they witnessed some from afar as Jesus, the one they had hoped would be their savior, drew his last breath and uttered the words that they never thought possible. It is finished. The disciples, now on the third day, are gathered behind locked doors in grief. And then Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. In many ways, dear ones, I find this Easter proclamation so much more palatable, so much more relatable. Don't get me wrong. I love the celebration of Easter Sunday, especially all the singing and the chocolate. But I find that I understand, or maybe it's that I comprehend, or maybe it's that I experience Jesus much more profoundly when he comes to stand with me, with those whom I love, when we are in a locked, room, scared, hopeless, full of questions and doubt. For it's in those times that Jesus shows us, meets us, breathes out peace. Peace be with you, he says to his beloved ones. Jesus, as we learn through the stories of our faith, shows up to the most vulnerable, the most excluded, to those who fancy themselves the most faithful, and to those who do not yet know the promise of God. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to those who are scared, lonely, ashamed. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to those who are imprisoned, locked away, those who are running for their lives. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to those who cannot by their own strength believe that they are worthy of love, of life, of even being seen. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to the sinners. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to the forgiven ones. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to those who are the deeply grieving. Peace be with you, the risen Christ says to those who cannot muster even a scrap of hope. Peace be with you. 
peace be with you. We say to one another, siblings in Christ, this greeting shared as we approach Christ's table of mercy and forgiveness is profound. It is profound as we utter the words, peace be with you, the very words of the risen Christ to one another. This is no small thing. Peace be with you, the risen Christ, the broken and the bruised body, alive and breathing. The risen Christ, the one who was dead and is now alive. This one, God with us, draws near in the cacophony of Easter festivities. Oh yes. And in the quiet and scared moments of life when we believe just as those disciples on that first day of the week that just maybe it is finished the struggles of the world too much the stressors the stresses and pressures of life too heavy the missteps and sins of ourselves too shameful the hatred, the greed, the loneliness too strong, the gift of faith not enough. And then, it is right then that Jesus came, that Jesus continues to come, that Jesus promises to come again and stand among us and say, and he says every single time, peace, peace be with you and breathes on us and fills us with the Holy Spirit so that we may know Jesus alive, risen from the dead. It is not finished at all. God is making all things new, even now. Peace be with you. Alleluia. Please rise for our hymn of the day, number 413.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivities to sin and death, we pray for we pray to God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church as witness of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Direct hmm. those who are given human, human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, Boldly confess your Son is Lord and God. With Jesus our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us show each other the sign.
who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 389. <laughs> Thank you. 